Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show here from London, across the pond with Ben Avery, our producer, who flew in for what, 48 hours? Yeah, about that. What a champ. What a champ that you would come all the way from your home in California. I flew you what? Business? Business class. Business class all the way to London. And uh, you've just been on vacation for two days. You've had an amazing, Mm -hmm. you've had an amazing time. You haven't had to do much. Mm -mm. You edited a Patreon episode. Mm -hmm. You told everyone at dinner you cut your own hair Mm -hmm. like we should be impressed. (laughs) You just trotted that out like some type of, you know, accomplishment. You cut your own hair. Uh, but it's lovely, and now you know we're on the uh, we're on the eve of returning to the dump that we live in, and I'm not really thrilled. Yeah, I'm really you know I I I could make a go of it here. The, there's an ashtray on the oh, thing. Okay. I'm covered. <laughs> How about you worry about you? Okay. Worry about the sound levels. Uh, I could make a go of it here, man. Mm. I'm kind of bummed to leave. I mean, you know. As we're here, the country of origin, our country of origin, is just, it's a deeply schizophrenic place. There's a real darkness there that can only be truly appreciated when you leave. Now, I'm sure this place would get boring after a while because, you know, I don't know, it it lacks some of that. But for right now, for the moment, I mean, I just, I'm kind of dreading going back to America. The food here is good. Like, you don't feel like you're dying when you eat. They don't have sugar in everything. They don't have, like, plastics in the bread. Like, the just hormones, the GMOs, the manipulated shit that we eat. You know, they got fast food here. They put it all on, like, one street. It's not every five feet. Things aren't open at 2 a.m. to get a full meal. The lifts are smaller, which is elevator for you fucking American scumbags. You don't know what I'm talking about. The streets are smaller. I mean, you know, you just, it's, it's uh, being fat is not really tolerated. It's not tolerated, and it, it, you get it. There's no big and tall stores. There's none of that. You can't get anything. I mean, it's like we drove an hour to some store. I thought it'd be like a DXL. It was called Bad Rhino. Think of that. It was called Bad Rhino. And it was not even a full store. It was just like a few shirts in a fat women's store in a shitty mall. An hour and a half out of London. They And I get it. They're like, let's not celebrate that. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm completely for that, by the way. They're like, let's not make it easy. We don't want it to be. They had a DXL here, an American fat store. They closed it down because, you know, like. It's not permitted. And if you go further into Europe, like Paris or something, I mean, or or if you go to Scandinavia, God help you. But, I mean, we're staying at the Mandarin Oriental, which is one of the greatest hotels in the world, if not the greatest. It's absolutely stunning. And the uh, building next to us is the, the famed One Hyde Park, where, you know, it's the most expensive residential building in the world. The penthouse is on the market right now for 200, I believe, 296 million pounds and I might make an offer I don't know I don't know if I will or not uh but you know it's a building full of Russian oligarchs and you know uh I I believe maybe uh, the Candy Brothers who developed it they might be in business with the Qataris I think and um it's just lovely it's just lovely and nobody's there and nobody's ever home and there's very few lights on um Because the best neighbors are not home. I mean, that's something that, you know, people don't realize. But that's why in all these really rich areas, 
you know, you have a great situation because the best neighbors are always off somewhere doing a genocide. Like, they're not, they're not home. They're not there to complain. You know, you don't have awkward run-ins with them outside. You don't have to suffer through small talk with people who are driving past you in their Lamborghini to go into a bulletproof glass garage. All of their mail is getting sent through an x-ray machine. They're being guarded by the equivalent of British Special Forces. None of those people, oddly enough, want to tell you what they think about everything. But I've lived in lots of areas where people cannot get enough of your time. What's nice about Russian oligarchs, uh, sheiks, people from the United Arab Emirates, uh, Chinese amusement park tycoons, people, uh, Russian gangsters in the uh, fertilizer business, Indian mining magnets, you know, uh, Brazilian uh, uh, mining magnets. Maybe it's Brazil that has the mines. I, I don't know. But, like, you know what's really nice about them is they really keep their opinions to themselves. They are a lesson. They don't even want you to know that they are your neighbor. What a lovely idea. Now, there's a premium to live in a building like that. There's one flat on sale. Flat means apartment for you American uh, non-healthcare having scum suckers <laughs> that I have to see tomorrow. But uh, flat uh, is uh, <laughs> in an apartment. And uh, there's one flat on sale for $5 million. Don't think I didn't call my business manager. We can't do it. It's, it's too out of range. But um, And then the next one up is $17 million, But that is the premium that you pay. That is the premium that you pay to live in a building where people don't want you to know they also live there. Could there be a better arrangement? Seriously, could there be a better arrangement in life than living in a essentially a hotel for uh, billionaire criminals? They keep to themselves. They don't bother you. They don't. They don't. Oh, what do you, Oh, the, what do you think about the game, huh? What do you think about these uh, trans kids in the schools? They don't get into that. Right from the Lambo to the apartment, that's it. They're not just going off on whatever the issue of the day is. They don't get on a soapbox. They're not trying to be heard. They're not getting you in the hallway. Did you see Taka? You know what they're doing now? is they're making kids transition in gym class. See, you can get away from all that. I mean, that is the answer. It, it is the only answer. And, you know, people are going to get mad at me again. They're going to go, well, well, how am I supposed to live in one high park? Well, that's not my problem. I can't manage your life. I can't even live there. I'm just saying, as, as things go... As goals go, it's a much better situation for someone like me who's just a little tired of people's opinions. I'm a little tired of the unsolicited opinions of friends, neighbors, family, coworkers. Uh, you know, I, I, I am now seeing the value uh, in the type of privacy that can only be attained uh, by living uh, with dictators who have a healthy degree of paranoia because many people want revenge on them for the things they've done. It's a nice place to live. It's a lovely... And then, you know, I like the guy from The Spectator who came to the thing. He's very sweet. But, you know, he's shitting on one Hyde Park. And that guy lives in, what, Putney or Scumsbury? Hey, shut up. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, you can't live there. Oh, Knightsbridge, why would you want to live there? Hey, hey shut up. And I like him. But let's get real. If I come to London, and I may, this is the only spot for me. I can't live anywhere else. Harrods is such a great fucking store. I don't fit in anything. I went to Christian Dior, and I said, I'll spend any amount of money. Do you have a 3X? And she said she did. Let me tell you right now, the 3X would not have fit you. I went into the dressing room with the 3X. It was like, I mean... Putting that on, it was like I was on ayahuasca. <laughs> Shapes were changing. I couldn't get my bearings. I'd stepped into another realm. 
I felt like I was on air. I didn't know. My hands looked bigger and smaller. I was trying to fit into this 3X, and it was mortifying, and it, it was terrible. I could Because, you know, the UK, it's different than America. It's very different, the sizes here. And finally, I came out, and of course, I didn't come out wearing it because I would have looked absurd. I came out, and I was like, oh, you only have it navy blue. I wanted it in brown. And she's like, we don't have it in brown. I'm like, thank God. And I just ran out of there. But our agent likes Harrods, which is interesting because he's plus size. And I wouldn't think he'd like Harrods, but then you go, they have three food courts in Harrods. So I go, oh, they're also selling ribeyes and sticky toffee pudding. (laughs) So I get why he likes it. But, you know, I mean, this is just a place for me. I've, I've had enough. Ben's watched the Masters for the last 10 hours. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely place to be, you know? And then, uh, you know, then you just keep checking Twitter in America and everybody's fighting about uh, Disney, you know? <laughs> people are just screaming. There's people outside of Disney with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> So, you know, again, I just, I, th- I, I think I want to get citizenship somewhere else. No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I want to get citizenship somewhere else. I don't think it works out, and I kind of don't want to be a part of it anymore, whatever it is. On both sides. On the side where it's like they think every teacher's a groomer trying to fuck their fat children. And on the other side of, like, we should let three-year-olds, uh, you know, cut their dicks off in the middle of math. <laughs> On both, uh, on both sides, I can no longer participate in my country. I really don't even want to. It's become an embarrassment to live there. Um, it's become an embarrassment to live in a country where uh, many of our major streets are lined with tents that people live in, but all of the, uh, all of the headlines are about when hotels are going to open in space. Everyone's getting into watches right now. I love them. You know why? Because they're great. They tell the time. They, I mean, watches are, and they're also, it, it tells somebody about you and, and what you value. It's, it's a beautiful thing to do. Vincero is a premium lifestyle brand in San Diego carrying incredible eyewear, watches, and much more. If you don't know them yet, there's no better time to check them out than now. They just released the Argo Automatic, a collector-quality dive watch you need to check out, which is awesome for all the SoCal people, wherever you are that like to dive and surf and everything. It's great. They create exceptionally crafted, ethically made products for today's most ambitious people. Modern pieces that elevate your look and stand the test of time. They're adamant about the process. They design everything in-house. They source their own materials, produce in small batches, and ship right to you. And they're really, they're affordable. I mean, this is, you know, the Argo named after the mythological Greek ship crafted by the gods. Perfect blend, form, function, style, utility, high Powered, Citizen, Myota, 901, automatic movement, fluted, unidirectional, rotating bezel, Swiss loom hands, divers claps. Come on, man. I love Argo. It's an amazing watch. I mean, you got to do it. It's great. Check them out at V-I-N-C-E-R-O collective.com forward slash Tim Dillon. That's V-I-N-C-E-R-O collective.com forward slash Tim Dillon. They support the podcast that you know and love, and it's great to buy a watch. I'm telling you, you go to Vincero Collective forward slash Tim Dillon and check out this new watch, the Argo Automatic. It's collector quality. It's beautiful. Have do you do you this watch? I have a Ventura. And what about it? It's the most beautiful watch I've ever owned. It's of course. Mm-hmm. And and I, I want and so what is this promotion here? Ventura was offering a special 20% and free shipping to our listeners with code Tim Dillon. Support our show and check them out. VinceroCollective.com forward slash Tim Dillon. 20% off and free shipping. Have they lost their minds? Well, they haven't because they know that it's such a great product. It's become embarrassing. And I know Elon just bought, uh, uh, he's the largest shareholder in Twitter. Tell us about that. About 11%. It's big news Mm. because Elon Musk, what happened to the tunnel he was building between, what happened to the tunnels? Has he given up on the tunnels? 
Remember when I was on Rogan and we were talking about these magical tunnels that Elon Musk? Why don't you build a tunnel under Austin to help the traffic, except the tunnel doesn't, you go underground and you never come above ground. The tunnel just leads and it just drops you into some like hole in the ground that you can never come out of. How about that? That'd be a great tunnel. But I guess we've given up on the tunnel, the ambitious tunnel system that was going to get rid of traffic. Um, and there's the Mars expedition. But now he's buying Twitter, which I'm for. I like the idea that he wants free speech back on Twitter. But I think the better idea is to just shut Twitter the fuck down. <laughs> That's everybody's real take that really thinks about it. The best thing to do would be to stop trying to make meaningful arguments in 140 characters or less. Get the fuck off it and move to one Hyde Park in Knightsbridge. <laughs> and if you can't do that, kill yourself. Because there's nothing else to do. Maybe Pollock's Peak in Hong Kong, perhaps, but the language barrier is something. It's not nothing over there. But that is also, I guess, and there's smog. But, I mean, uh, so what's he doing? Tell everyone what Elon Musk is doing uh, on Twitter. Elon Musk bought 10%. How much of Twitter did he buy? He bought 9% of Twitter, 9 which is... 9% of Twitter. How many shares is that, Benjamin? Let's see, because he made quite a quite some cash on here. Yes, uh, and some of the people at Twitter are mad. They're like, Elon made me money, but I still don't like him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he is $3 billion, and then it surged by 26% in response to the news, the stock. Well, bit. lovely. And yeah. now what's he doing? He's trying to get an edit button, mm -hmm. and he's trying... You know, he's got some concerns about uh, the draconian uh, policies we're seeing on a lot of these tech sites. Good for him. Yeah, he wants to open source the algorithm. Uh, what does that mean? Speak English. Uh, the choice of uh, which algorithm to use or not should be open to everyone. Interesting. Mm. So you could go on what, like a hate timeline? You go, I want to go on a hate timeline today. Yeah. You could curate whatever you want to see. You could curate whatever you want. Mm. So it's just not only Twitter feeding it. You can feed yourself. Mm. You can go, I want to go on a, a timeline of just celebrities and shootings. <laughs> I want Kardashians and school shootings today. That's my mood. I want to oscillate between meaningless celebrity gossip and the bodies of dead children. You can pick and choose. You can curate your timeline. I want a little QAnon today. I want a little QAnon today, and I'd like a, some motivational uh, speaking. Mm. I want some uh, Bitcoin and Q. I want a little Q and a little coin on the timeline today. That's what my timeline is. It's just Bitcoin, trans people, Ever, and and uh, QAnon related activities. <laughs> that is my entire Twitter timeline. It's Bitcoin, 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 trans, 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 mm -hmm. and still some, you know, rehabilitated version of QAnon that still lives on to this day, uh, that involves Ukraine and Hillary and Hunter Biden. And Trump and everything. And and I don't know what's on Hunter Biden's laptop. The guy just fled to Switzerland. The media clearly wanted Biden to win. They sandbagged the Hunter Biden laptop story. They said it was Russian disinformation. They lied. Uh, they wanted uh, Biden to win. They had, uh, they had a dog in the fight. And they, you know, so if you're still like, this whole idea that the media is even objective or ever was objective is not true. It's a fallacy. So if you believe that, I guess you're perpetually shocked by all of these things. But there is another media uh, where they they did report on the story, or as much of the story as they could report on. And that way, you know, obviously the mainstream carries a lot of weight, and they were the ones that kind of, you know, diminished the story. But it was still out there. But what is on the laptop? He's smoking There's crack. Who takes all these photos of themselves smoking crack? Like, did, has anyone asked that question? Why, why are you photographing? Like, I understand if you're fucking a hooker mm -hmm. and you think it's hot. Mm. It's still not a good idea to just take 80,000 images. How many images are there? There's lots. There's How lots. many? <laughs> but why, is the, why does he have, like, 20,000 images of him smoking crack? I've never even thought about it. Is I he being blackmailed? <laughs> But, but they're on his laptop. It's so weird. Yeah, he's just cracked out in motels and most of them. There's, it's weird stuff.
But no one thought Biden was going to win, so he's a weird guy to blackmail Hunter mm. Biden. But well, his dad was the VP. Mm. Biden was the VP. Mm. But so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, maybe this is a blackmail thing, but why would you have thousands of photos? There's photos of him just sleeping in bed with a crack pipe hanging out of his mouth. And, and you go, can someone explain to me who took that photo? I guess a, a hooker? Yeah, and there's orgy photos, too, orgy pics, him with hookers. Where are the orgy pics? I mean, I saw one of them. He was like, he, was, he had a hooker's, uh, he was like choking her out with a stocking or something. <laughs> I saw one with Squirtle on the bed, a pet uh, a stuffed Squirtle, a him and a hooker. What's a, is that a Pokemon? It's a Pokemon. He's like pretending to bang her from the back, and there's just a Squirtle in the. He's an artist. Mm. I, I mean, the guy's an artist. So, I mean, is it really appropriate to go through all of his sexual peccadilloes? He's an artist. The man's an artist who was involved in it with a gas company in the mm. Ukraine mm. for his art. Mm hmm. What was he doing in the Ukraine? Uh, oh, there was a uh, he had a deal with a gas company there, but he also had uh, some sort of I'm going to uh, look this up real quick. But supposedly that might have been a distraction from their dealings with China, too, because they were investing in some companies over there. What qualifications does he have to do any of this? No, I'm curious. Did he go to school? Uh, Did he graduate from see. school? Did Hunter Biden get a degree in anything? And is it? in any type of field that would make you imagine that he has some kind of expertise in energy. Okay, so he went to Georgetown University. That's a good one. And then after that, he went to Yale Law School. Okay, so he's he, he at one point, he was somewhat qualified. Mm -hmm. But okay, and what, what did he get to do? He's a lawyer? Let's see here. Um. And of course, daddy helps get you into all these places. I'm not blind, but mm -hmm. if you get through them... If you get through Georgetown and you get through Yale, you at least have some level of, you know, I can understand how he got involved uh, in, you know, in, in, in whatever scam he, he was doing. He's an attorney, so he has a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from Georgetown University, and then he became a lawyer after that. So it's just so then, uh, MFA in law. Yeah. How does he get involved with the Ukraine? Uh, how does he get involved? Because we're trying to figure out the real story here because my Twitter timeline <laughs> says that He's run, you know, the whole game, Hillary and him. And all of these people are undeterred. They're not dissuaded by the fact that everything they've believed hasn't come true. Nobody's in Gitmo. Nobody's, there's been no, you know, like uh, any type of reckoning in the way they imagined. And yet the, the troubling amount of schizophrenics in the country... Are, 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 are. So I'm trying to weave through that narrative and find what's true. We know he smokes crack. That seems, that's beyond uh, any type of debate, I don't think. That's not a conspiracy theory. He enjoys crack cocaine. He likes hookers, and that goes along with crack. If you're going to smoke crack, you don't go read to kids in libraries. You fuck hookers. My curiosity is why he's involved with the Ukraine. Here, uh, it actually I have to. Which, go to by the, the way, BBC. we got to we got to edit a few jokes out of my special because the Ukraine is yeah. just unfortunately, you know, you do a few light bits, and then uh, you know the the there's bodies everywhere, and I mean it's just like hey, you know it's you know it's just we got to a few of the bits got to get edited out of the special. They were throwaway bit, you know, a mm -hmm. couple of one liners in the front, but. And we don't know if we're going to drop the specials an hour or if we're going to just drop it in clips. We don't know yet. Nobody mm -hmm. watches an hour. We're debating that. But we got to get the Ukraine out because maybe Putin uses a chemical weapon or a dirty bomb in there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I don't know what happens. But it just, you know, it's getting to the point now where it's not, not that it was ever funny, but, you know, it's just getting to the point where it's really not funny. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's to a point now where, you know, I feel like it's in poor taste. To do a few of the, uh, you know, lower the gas price bits that we were, <laughs> that I was doing. Things you've heard on the podcast already, and mm. they were going over well, but, sure. you know, it's unfortunate. Now, they, they had a thing in Bucha. Uh, Bucha, I don't know how to say it, but, uh, you know, the Russian troops uh, went in there and um, are, I mean, the term is massacre. Mm -hmm. The term is Janet. You know, I'm not there, but it's certainly, you know, from the pictures and from people that 
are you know you know reporting from the Ukraine. It certainly doesn't look good. Three hundred plus found dead. Yeah, three hundred plus. Yeah. Well, it's not. You know, I mean, it's bad, but just in pure numbers. To be honest, in pure numbers. I mean, we've done three hundred easy. <laughs> So it is, you know, but I'm not I'm not one of these people who excuses everything the Russians mm. do. Like there's people on Twitter now that we're everything the Russians do. They're like, well, let's take a look at this. Mm. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think I, I think a sovereign country was invaded. Uh, Russia's in the wrong. It's, you know, I, I mean, I still don't want a nuclear war. I still don't think that we should be uh, enforcing a no fly zone. And the conflict is I don't think it should grow in scope. But. Mud water is a coffee alternative with four aptogenetic mushrooms with Ayurvedic herbs with one-seventh of the caffeine is a cup of coffee. You get energy without the anxiety, jitters, or crash of coffee. Each ingredient was added, Benjamin, with a purpose. Cacao and chai for mood and a microdose of caffeine. Lion's mane for alertness. Cordyceps to help physical performance. Chaga and reishi to support your immune system. Turmeric for soreness and cinnamon for antioxidants. Isn't your wife allergic to cinnamon? Yes, well, is. none of this for her. But mud is Whole30 approved, 100% USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan and kosher certified. Mud Water has launched their new evening ritual, the Rest Blend, a non-caffeinated tea that promotes relaxation and rest because the best morning ritual starts the night before. Go to mudwater.com slash Tim to support the show and use code TIM for 5% off. We all need energy right now. Whatever you're doing, arguing with people on Twitter, living your best life, exercising, going on dates, getting back into the groove post-pandemic. You know that you need energy. I need energy. Everybody needs energy. And you know where I get my energy? From mud water. Mud water does it because there's no crash. Sure, you could eat a McFlurry or McGriddle or something, but mud water is healthy. They've got all this stuff they've chosen for you to be healthy. You don't need energy and then a crash. So go right now. Walk, don't run. Run, don't walk. To Mud Water, M U D W T R. That's M U D W T R dot com slash T I M. Support the show. Use code T I M. Mud Water. $5 off for Mud Water. How many times do I have to tell you people about the Raycon wireless earbuds? They're the best way to bring audio with you because no matter where you shake things up to, literally, no matter how much you shake, they won't fall out of your ears. They've got several different settings. They've got an alertness mode in case you want to stay alert. When you're out jogging, maybe in a major city, they offer eight hours of playtime, 32 hours battery life, and they're priced just right. You get quality audio for half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. They're less than half the price of other premium earbuds, and they work better. They have longer playtime. They're more stylish. I'm telling you right now, I have Raycon earbuds. Do you have them? I have them as you well. You should, because they're phenomenal. I love them, and you'll love them. I'm telling you, it's better. Don't go with the go with the go your gut here. I'm telling you. I, would I lie? Raycon earbuds. They're everywhere. You, I see people with them in their ears, and I know they're a good person, and they're sharp, and they're smart. Right now, Tim Dillon Show listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tim. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim. Save 15%. On Raycons. It's a great way to show people that you love the Tim Dillon Show and that you're you're serious about what you put in your ears. Raycon is the brand. You're saving money. You're saving money without a promo code, and we're giving you a promo code. It's buyraycon.com slash Tim, and you save 15%. Have you been able to find out mm -hmm. what Hunter Biden is up to in the Ukraine? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was looking at the China stuff too, which was interesting uh, because he has. What's a lot he of... doing in China? Okay, so uh, what kind of crack they have over in China? So, from an email from Hunter Biden in August 2017, it indicated he was receiving a 10 million dollar annual fee from a Chinese billionaire for introductions alone, though it is unclear who was involved in alleged introductions. And it says, in 2013, Hunter flew aboard Air Force Two with his father, who was then vice president, on an official visit to Beijing where the younger Biden met investment banker Jonathan Lee. Hunter told the New Yorker he just met him for a cup of coffee, but 12 days after the trip, a private equity fund, BHR Partners, was approved by the Chinese authorities. Mr. Lee was chief executive, and Hunter was a board member. He would hold a 10% stake. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm 
he resigned from the board of BHR in April 2020, but still held his 10% stake in BHR as of July this year. Uh, so then the New York Post reported in April 2015 in which an advisor to Burisma, which is a, a... Right, that's the big one. Mm, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Bur- Burisma, Burisma. It's a gas company in mm. the Ukraine, right? Natural gas. And then the email apparently thanked Hunter Biden for inviting him to meet his father in Washington. Hunter was a director on the board of uh, this a Ukrainian-owned Hunt, private see, energy here's, company. Here's what I'm, Hunter was killing it. Mm. Like, he was doing well. This is what they do, mm-hmm. these people, the politicians, you know? At what point did he throw this all away to just smoke crack? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to analyze it from that perspective. Like, here's a guy. Daddy's the VP. Mm. He's making all the introductions. He's getting paid real money. At what point does the crack addiction be just become untenable where he can no longer perform said duties? You know, and I'm sure all of this is shady and underhanded and whatever. And, you know, but at what point... Why is Hunter not out in front? Where is Hunter? That like these are questions I have. Like where is he? What happened? Why is he not more like what is the deal? Did they just put him somewhere for the election? Like I mean is the guy not like like Roger Clinton or Tiffany Trump, the fat daughter? Did they just like put them somewhere? Mm. Where is Hunter Biden right uh, now? Is he in One Hyde Park? Is I, he next to us? I think he's in Malibu. Is is, he in the boo? This is from The Guardian three days ago. Is Hunter in the boo? Secret Service renting mansion for over $30,000 to protect Hunter Biden. They chose the Malibu property to be as close as possible to the president's son, report says. Huh. Dream dinner. Me, you, Hunter Biden, Caitlyn Jenner. Mm. I mean, in Malibu. Sunset, Mm -hmm. no boo. Just beautiful... With two great, with two patriots, four if you count us. So Hunter Biden's in Malibu, but I, I'm trying to like. He's a wild guy. His his brother died, mm-hmm. and he started banging his brother's wife. Yeah, some of that's on her though, <laughs> right? Hunter's just kind of being Hunter in that scenario. Like mm. some of that has got to be on her. What kind of woman starts banging the crackhead? So now, they refused, get Jen Psaki up, who refuses to answer any questions about Hunter Biden. Now, now this idiot, here's what I'm, here's where, where I'm having the trouble with all this. You got this guy, he brings his laptop in mm. for a repair. In, in Delaware. Why, what kind of crack is he on? And I've said this before on the show, where he's like, doesn't he have access to bit like, well, why is he bringing his lap? Doesn't he have a guy? You would think, right? Why is he bringing? What is he going to the Geek Squad? What is he doing? He's getting ten mil a year to set up investment bankers in China. Why is he? I, 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 I'm confused, but I guess he's smoking crack. <laughs> right. So all of the holes in the Hunter Biden story mm. go back to the fact that he's smoking krill, mm. which is a nickname for crack from the old days when. I was uh, out there uh, misbehaving. Never like Hunter, but it wasn't great. I got Jen Psaki here. You want to hear her? Yeah, I, because they refuse to even... They, they pretend like this guy's not alive. They act like Hunter Biden doesn't exist. A lot of stories about Hunter Biden surfacing this week. So to ensure the independence of the investigation, would the president support the appointment of a special counsel? Well, first, the president has never had a conversation with the Department of Justice about any investigations into any member of his family. He said that during the campaign, and he will continue to abide by that. So I'd point you to the Department of Justice for any additional steps they would take. They would make those decisions independently. Is there any concern that they're not going to be necessarily seen as being able to make the decisions independently? If the White House Chief of Staff is out saying that uh, the president is confident his son did not break the law. Well, that's something the president has said, and certainly we would echo. But in the same answer to that question, Peter, uh, during an interview this week on an ABC, Ron Klain also said the Justice Department is independent and they will make their own decisions. And the president has said that he never spoke to his son about his overseas business dealings. Is that still the case? Yes. That's a lie. But I don't know what Hunter did that was illegal that can be proved. 
I know the hunter's done a lot of things that are illegal, white collar, mm. blue collar, all kinds of, you know. But I don't know what he can, what can be proved. Is it a campaign finance violation? Is it because this is what they do all the time? They make a lot of money. They they make introductions. They I'm unaware of what he. I mean, obviously the crack <laughs> and the hookers, right? But then the QAnon people are going, "There's human tra- There's proof of human trafficking." On his laptop, which maybe is true. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I don't know what the Justice Department is looking into. I haven't seen that confirmed. That there's CP. We're not going to see it confirmed. Yeah. I don't even think they mean CP. I mean, mm. I'm sure the QAnon people do, but mm. I think they mean like traffic hookers. We also have to stop the idea that every hooker is human traffic. Can we cut it out? Everyone with a shit job is human trafficked. Everybody was thrown in a van and taken to Denny's without a choice. This is how some people make a living. So, yes, some of them may be trafficked, but some of them are just showing up to make a living. So, I just, where, I just don't know. So, this guy's in, like, hiding in Malibu, and, and he's not, can he make a statement? I guess probably lawyers are advising him not to. This is from February. I imagine they're advising him not to. Uh, yeah, so this is from February 27th. By- so, again, go into this now for people that are like me. They're behind the eight ball because I don't even live in America anymore, so I don't really give a fuck. I just want to hang out with Boris Johnson. Uh, so now, all right, so take us back to this entire thing where the like, this guy that discovered the laptop just fled to, I believe, Sweden. It's on Drudge. He, he fears retaliation from the White House. Supposedly, he's downloading thousands of images off the Hunter Biden laptop. And I, I, was this a guy that he brought it to originally? I, you know, this guy has fled the country, which I get because he, he doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want the old uh, Michael Hastings treatment. Here from the Daily Mail, whistleblower who handed Hunter's abandoned laptop to congressman. DailyMail.com reveals he has 450 gigabytes of deleted material, including 80,000 images and videos, and has fled to Switzerland, okay, fearing retaliation from the White House. Who has 80,000 images? That's crazy. On their, on their laptop, right? Mm-hmm. There's something here, folks. And 120,000 emails. That's, that's insane. There's something here, folks. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm coming at this in a non-ideological way. I'm just looking. If any of this is true, 120,000 archived emails. Well, the, the, the emails are not as, as much of a thing for me. 80,000 images? That does make you think there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. That he's paying for large transfers of images to have on his laptop. Like, he clearly didn't take them. So then, who knows what it was? But uh, hey, let me let me take you. Don't through you it real understand quick. when you got rid of Jeffrey and Ghislaine, This is what happens. You have crackheads running the show now. <laughs> Let's be very honest about it. Look at where Jeffrey and Ghislaine lived. Ghislaine came from England. Look, it's not right. We know it's not right. Okay, but if you're gonna run a global human trafficking ring. Do you want Ghislaine Maxwell, who spent her life mixing with royals, knows which fork to use with a salad, wears probably vintage Cavalli, I'm guessing. Mm. Doesn't look great. I mean, the hair, she kind of looked like a a wet dog sometimes. (laughs) Did the best she could with what she had. She's not a great beauty. It's the UK. It's not Brazil. The women are what they are. But the point is, do you want her and Epstein, a little egg penis Brooklyn math teacher... Do you want them or do you want this guy smoking rock in Malibu whose father's got dementia, fucking his dead brother's wife? Do you see what I mean? It's a terribly unpopular point I'm making and it's hard to make. But it involves the realities of the world. Ooh, I saw a light go on in one Hyde Park. Go on. Go go back into this. Where is this man from Switzerland? And let's get him on the program. Uh, okay, so let's see here. So its name is Jack M- Maxi. Can we, if we release the special in clips, can we release 5,000 Hunter Biden images with every comedy mm. clip I release? Can we make a deal with him? Mm. Get our fat agent on the phone. Say that we're going to do a drop 
Every Monday, it's going to be a comedy drop with 15,000 images from Hunter Biden's laptop. Can't we? Yeah, it's like an NFT, right? It's Yeah, maybe. Bitcoin conferences this weekend. We didn't go. We're in London. We don't live in America. We're not going to some big convention center. Okay, so he gave Daily Mail... A they co- wouldn't pay us what we wanted, but go on. He gave a copy of the hard drive from Hunter's abandoned laptop in the spring of 2021. He also gave copies and material from it to the Washington Post, New York Times, and Senator Chuck Grassley. Well, that fell on deaf ears. They had no interest. The New York Times is like, delete! He claims they all sat on it for months. For the past two weeks, and this is from February 27th, uh, Maxi has been hiding in Zurich, working with IT experts to dig out more data from the laptop from hell. He's a former co-host of... The Ac- laptop from hell. What a great book. And now, ABC's movie of the week, The Laptop from Hell. This guy looks like a class act. Well, he's a, a co-host of ex-Donald Trump advisor Steve Bannon's podcast, The War Room. Is this who Whitney Webb is trying to set me up with? Oh, is it? I don't know. If it is, then we got, we'll got get him on the show. This is his name, Maxie. His name's Maxie. I, I don't know. It Listen... Be, well, here's the problem. They ain't, there's no problem killing us. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why this guy goes, he goes, if I'm going to go on a show, I'll go on this thing. They'll mm-hmm. kill them. Mm-hmm. Steve Bannon probably told him, kill these fucks. Steve Bannon's like, don't get me killed. Get a younger version of me killed. And I don't agree with Steve Bannon on a lot of what he says. And, I, and, and, and my skin looks great sometimes. Mm-hmm. But the point is, that is, if this is who she's trying to set us up with, we'll have this guy on. We'll go to Switzerland tomorrow. Can you message her and ask her, is it this guy? Because we will interview, tell her, go, is it this guy? We will go to Switzerland tomorrow and interview this guy. I will go to Switzerland uh, tomorrow and we will interview this guy later in the week if this is what I think it is. But if, if it's not, I mean, we're not, I don't want some hack on here, but if it's this guy, I'm not trying to get killed either, but I mean, at least let's get killed over something. 80,000 images. Jesus Christ. I've got like 40 images on my phone and 15 of them are of scones. Was this guy a former White House staffer for Trump? Is he? I don't know, Ben. You're the one who does the research. I don't think he is. I'm the comic uh, genius and the cultural commentator. You're the back office. I'm wondering if it's not this guy. I don't think it is this guy. We also tried to get J.K. Rowling. We wanted to go to Edinburgh and have J.K. Rowling, uh, you know, come out with the, the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the figures of the man and the woman with the, you know, the, the stick. What, what's that? The pointer? And she point, you know, she, we wanted to do a thing with her where she'd point to the genitals, the whole thing. I wanted to interview her as Hagrid. And where she would make great points, but I would interview her as her creation, Hagrid, the groundskeeper from Harry Potter. And, and, and she would make points about bio, biological uh, essentialism uh, in terms of gender. And I would sit there as Hagrid and probably agree with a lot of it. But we tried to get J.K. Rowling, and I mean, that bitch, I can't even message her. I can't even get Tulsi Gabbard on. Again, the Nell kids, who I love, but they have, they have Trump, they have fucking... They got, Ch- uh, what's your name, Caitlyn Jenner on? Mm-hmm. I can't get Tulsi Gabbard on, and I, 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 I fucking offered to do the interview in Moscow. Should hit hard, folks. Should hit real hard. <laughs> right now, the demands on people's emotional health are more than I've ever seen. We live in a time of stress, of chaos, uh, a, a time of disorienting change. Uh, people are are mortgaging their emotional well-being. They are not taking the time to uh, care about their emotional fitness. Uh, so what do you do? You need better help. Better help is online therapy that offers some really, really amazing results. They have online counselors. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. If you don't like your counselor, you can always switch. They have counseling that may not be available in your physical location. It's inexpensive. I, I've used it. All of my friends use it. I'm telling you right now, it's a great way to get yourself from the comfort of your own home. You can put yourself on the path to wellness. 
which is something that we don't talk enough about, is, is mental health and, and wellness. And I am a proponent of people not being uh, crazy. Isn't it nice when, when you bump into someone and your first thought is not, what a loon. And so there's a way to do that. And the way to do that is to go to betterhelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Tim D. You get 10% off the first month at betterhelp.com. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. I'm telling you, give it a try and see if online therapy can lower your stress level. It's customized for you. They offer video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. This is customized for your comfort level. I'm telling you right now, you won't regret it. You'll be mentally healthier, physically healthier. You'll feel better. You'll be more focused at work. You'll be more present during the day, present in your relationships. You'll be a better friend. It can all happen. Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tim D. Your moments away from uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. You are moments away from feeling better about the world. What do U.S. News, PC Magazine, and Popular Science have in common? They all rank Simply Safe Home Security as the best home security of 2021. In fact, U.S. News just named Simply Safe the best home security of 2022. You have Simply Safe. Mm -hmm. I live in a high rise where I don't need it, but most people I know that live in homes right now are taking extra care to keep themselves and their family safe. Simply Safe protects your whole home around the clock, every door, window, and room. It's backed by the best 24 7 professional monitoring in the business, ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs to your home with a comprehensive set of sensors and cameras, including uh, the all new wireless outdoor security camera. You always know what's going on inside and outside your home. Simply Safe is less than one dollar a day, and you can get it set up in around 30 minutes. And it's always simple to use. There's never a long term contract. You can even try it for 60 days risk free to see if you like it. If you don't send it back free of charge, Simply Safe protects over a million homes in the United States alone. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com. S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash Tim Dillon. Go right now and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Did you hear that? It's a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon. Now, what's this man's name? This guy from Switzerland? Oh, he's not from Switzerland, but he's hiding in Switzerland. So he's got 80,000 images from this laptop. So he has spent the last few months just jerking off. I mean, I guess. He says there's images of drug trafficking, prostitution, and criminal activity. Which okay, he, and well, he's, we know that. And he's going to make it all public, is what he says. That's his is plan. that a crime after the fact? Like, it might be. Can he be charged? If a photo comes out with you smoking crack with a prostitute, Ben, and I pray every day it mm-hmm. does. If a photo comes out, is that a, can they charge you with a crime? Uh, I think so, but Jack said that the FBI never filed Hunter Biden's laptop into evidence. Who's so, Jack? The Jack Maxey, the, oh. the guy. So he said uh, the FBI just, you know, ignored it. Like, you know, you see time and time again where something's they go to the FBI, they give them a bunch of evidence, and they just I don't it. know. I have, a, I have a good amount of faith in the FBI, and, and they really seem to follow up on everything. I mean, from my experience, they do. I mean, I mean what is the FBI not followed up on? I mean, they're just... They just get it done. So here's here's uh, here's the order. Here's the handoff. The only thing the FBI doesn't follow up on is the thing is the crimes that the FBI themselves <laughs> uh, have initiated and uh, curated, which is the vast majority of things they're investigating. Okay, so in 2019, the laptop was abandoned at the Delaware Computer Store. The owner is his name is John Mac Isaac. He gave a copy to Trump's lawyer Rudy Giuliani, who then passed it on to Maxi. So then uh, he says, I came here so that we could do a forensic examination of Hunter's laptop safely in a country that still respects human liberty and the ideals of liberal democratic principles. And great chocolate. He said, I do not believe this would have been possible inside the United States. We had numerous attempts on us from trying to do things like this there. Uh, Maxi said that after contacting Daily Mail about the laptop last year, black suburban SUVs appeared outside his house. And former U.S. intelligence officer they were maybe friends trying to protect him. 
Oh, maybe, yeah. That's probably what was happening. They're probably trying to protect him. He said he kept receiving strange calls, uh, uh, and former U.S. intelligence officers, friends he shared copies with, told him that they received uh, strange calls. I showed this to a friend of mine in desperation in February 2021 because nobody would listen to me. No news organizations would take it. In fact, the very first major news organization to take it was Daily Mail. Very dear friends of mine, the sharp tip of the spear, were making welfare calls to me every day, basically to see if I was still alive. Uh, Maxi claimed one former intelligence agency's senior staffer told him soon after he received the hard drive in 2020, if you don't release enough of this so that they know you can release all of it, I'm telling you, brother, you're a dead man. Maxi took their advice in October 2020 and posted batches of emails and other files from the laptop on file sharing sites. But after an hour, the links were taken down. Maxi says he believes the U.S. government was hunting down files from the laptop posted online and flagged them to the companies. There were five drop boxes, two in the U.S., one in New Zealand, two in the U.K. You know what's the most disturbing thing about this whole story? Because Biden has, like, dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm. Like, he, he, he has to, they have to keep explaining to him what's happening. All right, so sit down. <laughs> Let's go over this again. Your son is on crack. Bo? No, Bo's dead. Hunter? Yes. Hunter's on crack. He's fucking hookers. And he's got a lot of shady deals in the Ukraine. And they've got to probably do that three or four times a week with him. So this is a full-scale kind of all-out war to prevent what's ever on this laptop getting out mm. because best case is really embarrassing. But I think worst case, it proves there's some criminal activity. So now I'm getting it. It's coming together more. Where And the, the bigger thing is uh, what Trump tried to make issue out of Hunter Biden's dealings with Ukraine, Russia, and China, which included high-paid consultancies and gifts and allegations that as VP, Joe Biden had shaped American foreign policy in Ukraine to benefit his son. Well, that's a little bit of a stretch because the foreign policy in Ukraine has always been designed to benefit the United States of America, which is a country... Uh, that is based on fraud and deception and lies. Mm. And so, I mean, I'm sure what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Mm. You know, it's like, yeah. I mean, Hunter's not the only businessman running over there smoking crack with hookers, mm. you know, you know, but putting his fucking beak in the trough. Mm. You know, not that, by the way, it's completely inappropriate when your father's the vice president, mm. but it's not like American policy isn't that anyway. Mm. Like... I'm sure America's goal is not out there to spread democracy. America's goal is to be out there to get, you know, willing trading partners and trade routes and control of ports and, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And, you know, they want uh, economic, you have economic interests in all of these countries. So, yeah, I have no doubt. That doesn't mean it's, it's, it's good that, you know, Putin's over there in Buka making soup out of people. But... <laughs> For sure, let's be let's be honest about what America's interest in the Ukraine is. We didn't give a fuck about the Ukraine. America's interest in the Ukraine is a is a financial and uh, geopolitical strategy, like every country, just like Russia's interest, mm. just like China's interest. But what's interesting about this laptop is all of this came out because a crackhead abandoned a laptop in a Dell. Why would you even have a laptop fixed? It, it's just such a I mean, people got to look at Hunter and be like, what the fuck? I mean, Jill s seems pretty with it. It's her son, right? Mm -hmm. You wonder if she calls him and goes, you know, you're a real disgrace. <laughs> I mean, he. Th this is black sheep in a family. The literal term black sheep is to abandon a laptop with 80,000 images of you smoking crack and punching hookers. And then 120,000 emails of shady business dealings in China and the Ukraine while your father is running for president. Like, oh, his, his mom died in a car accident, by the way. It wasn't Jill. Just correcting. Oh, okay. Well, this is maybe why he's using the crack, right? I mean, there, there's problems there. The mm. Biden family has problems. Maybe he was disturbed by the fact that his father kept referring to the inner cities as jungles. <laughs> Maybe that made him start. Uh, <laughs> maybe that made him start experimenting with out of mind experiences. So Jen Saki, who by the way has the energy of a woman scorned, right? Like every time you see her, she's just the energy of a woman who was told like an hour earlier. Like she is the energy of a woman who finds a text from her husband's lover 
on her phone and it's a man or something, you know? Like, she is just, uh, I mean, God. And supposedly she's leaving, right? She's going to MSNBC because they're going to pay her a lot mm-hmm. of money. That, that's what I heard, that Jen Psaki is leaving. But they're just, they're pretending this doesn't exist, but this is going to kind of be... Yes, MSNBC. Unle- the only way this doesn't get bigger is if this implicates some Republicans, too. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, it would shock me if it did because, I mean, they're an honest, upstanding crew. But, I mean, perhaps there's some bipartisan shenanigans. You know, is he the only picture on there with the hookers and the blow? It's so weird to me to take that many photos. When you have that many photos on your own fucking laptop, God, are you an idiot. Mm -hmm. God, are you an idiot. It seems to me, could it be possible he's being blackmailed? There's um, some level of blackmail. They're they're emailing him these photos. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. No. no. I mean, he was uh, supposedly so. Not only does he have a child with uh, London Roberts, with uh, his, now who's his, London Roberts? So uh, he has a three-year-old unacknowledged child, supposedly. Uh, then uh, I, on top of all of this, he's not a good father. <laughs> I mean, now I'm starting to question his character. She's a stripper. I am really, really losing my faith in America right now. Hunter Biden Mm. has a child that he refuses to acknowledge with someone named London Robert. And with the first name of London, she is shockingly a stripper. Mm. Is this child trans? (laughs) Because I want to spend four hours talking about that. And only that. Where is London Roberts at? Can we get her on the show? Probably. Uh, he also stayed with a woman named Zoe Keston, who's like a, uh, um, a lingerie and textile designer. He spent five hours giving testimony on Biden spending, where he s- would stay at the Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles, where in 2018 he was preoccupied with cooking crack cocaine. Hard not to like him, you know? I mean, to be honest with you, like, he stays at really cool places. Mm. You know, it's hard for me to judge a substance abuser. As long as all the women were of age that he was choking, you know, and as long as it was consensual Mm -hmm. uh, BDSM, it's hard to get mad at a guy who's just trying to get his beak wet in the Ukraine and smoke a little krill with a few ladies. But, again, it's uh, not right if his father is making policy that's at all influenced by his son, but I don't, I mean, that seems like a weird thing, but not impossible. But again, I think the policy is just like, yeah, we want to pillage the Ukraine. <laughs> like, we just want to. So Hunter's just like, let's send Hunter's like the Marines. You just send him in first. Let's send Hunter in. Let's see what happens. He'll, he'll find out where all the good brothels are. He'll figure out where you can <laughs> score, you know. And then we'll get the rest of the fucking ugly Americans, great Ben Mezenrick book. We'll get the rest of them over there to do the same thing. But where are we at now? I mean, he's not been charged with anything. We have this guy in Switzerland going, I'm going to release photos of the laptop. Mm. And uh, they're looking into uh, whether Hunter Biden correctly met tax obligations during a period in which, by his own telling, he was being paid 50000 a month by Ukrainian firm Burisma. Are Biden's financial ties to foreign figures and businesses while his father served as Barack Obama's number two? So they're also looking into the tax thing. Uh, but obviously people say illegal lobbying was also an issue that shadowed Trump throughout his presidency. All the people right now that are worrying about what your kids learn in school, which is something you should worry about. But don't you see what your kids end up doing to you in the long run? Don't you get it? You're worried about what your kids are learning in school, but let me tell you right now, it's only a matter of time before they're smoking crack in Hong Kong, fucking you all up. Or Shanghai. Whatever. Kiev. Don't you understand that? It comes back to bite you. Stop with the helicopter parenting. They need to learn responsibility, and if they cut their dick off and they don't want it and they want their dick back, well, that's a big oops. I'm against that, by the way. I'm against them cutting their dicks off. 
I'm I'm <laughs> I'm thrown by this whole Hunter Biden thing. I think there's something there. Eighty thousand images is very weird. It's very strange. Regardless, the federal tax probe is moving forward. A federal grand jury has heard testimony in recent months uh, about income and payments he received uh, while serving on the Ukraine Energy Company board. Well, we'll leave it there because we just don't have that much more info, but I'm sure that we'll be getting more info. I'd love to interview uh, this guy in Switzerland. He's not going to grant an interview to me. We could really get involved with the trash British press Mm -hmm. here. Like if we stayed here and lived here, we could like do something with the Daily Mail, kind of real... You know, th- this could really be, we could really carve out an identity. What do you think? You've only been in the country for a few days, but what, what are your impressions of it? What do you think? I love Dublin. I met a guy there that was really awesome, and, and uh, I'll see him again. Uh, you know, Dublin was a really cool place. Uh, you know, I connected to it as an Irish person. Uh, what? But this is kind of, you. Know, whereas Dublin is my heritage, this is your heritage because I explained to you I'm ethnic, mm-hmm. I'm Irish. My mm-hmm. grandparents came off the boat. They, they, you know, they had Gaelic sayings on the wall. The the parties that were singing and fighting and there's grudges and it's Irish. It's Irish Catholic repressed things and it, you know. But you were really a wasp, and this is your heritage. Mm-hmm. Just kind of quiet people, golf, you know, somewhat dull, autistic eccentric to a degree, mm-hmm. you know, Seville row suits, uh, you know, leather boots, mm-hmm. cardigan, like this is where you kind of come from. Horse, you know, horses, mm-hmm. gray, oceanic climate, a little humid and windy, cold water. Like there's something about this area that very much is your heritage. Do you connect to this area kind of the way I connected to Ireland when I saw a lot of uh, people that, you know, were drunk and political reactionaries, you know, wandering around the park? <laughs> do, you, do you connect at all to the UK? And it's kind of a very dry, dull, you know, you know, but in a really good way, right? It's like London's the financial capital of the world. It's like a big, it's a big bank and everybody, you know, so... Dude. It's nice. People aren't screaming and yelling. It's very civilized. No, it's, it's, it's very, very civilized. I mean, Ray Cump made a great point. It's like, we don't live in a civilized country <laughs> in America. We I mean, don't. We just don't. We don't. The people here are so... Marjorie Taylor Greene is threatening Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> people what? are... What people, <laughs> she said her husband will beat him up. Or She went to the cops because she said... He said, where's Will Smith when you need her? She goes, he's threatening to kill me. <laughs> I Again, it's just not a civilized country. People are attacking each other at the Academy Award. It's just not. It's a grotesque. It's a fun house. It's a circus. And I don't live there anymore, so I don't really judge it. I just, I live at One Hyde Park. But do you connect to this? Do you connect to this area? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, these are my, uh, I guess are, you're not supposed to say these are my people, but like why the the clod, I like the tea, I like the clotted cream, I like that people dress nice, the I like that it's quiet. Clotted cream is great. I thought it was butter. It was so good. Uh, people love golf over here, and uh, nobody's walking around with uh, political statements on their shirts. Uh, people smell very nice. They they have good hygiene. Yeah. I mean, what's there not to love about it? No right. one's screaming. I love that no one's screaming and Nobody's yelling. Nobody's screaming. Everybody has a is 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 just everybody's calm. Mm. Mm. Now Ireland, there's a little more fire. They're still talking about the reunification of Ireland. I mean, they'll mm. never stop with that. But the guy that I met, he had a, an Irish accent, and there's there's something very attractive about an Irish act. Don't you don't you agree? About an Irish accent? Yeah, don't you think it's very attractive? It's uh, it's the most musical accent where their voice is like an instrument they're kind of playing. There's something attractive about that particular accent, mm. you know? Mm. That I think I think that's universally, I I think is universally, um, believed. Mm. For straight guys, I think it's the Latin accent, and maybe f- maybe f- it's. I, maybe Irish makes sense too. I guess. Um, straight guys is the Latin accent. I think so, right? 
I don't. You tell me. Like, because it's the it's the silver tongued lady who gets you to take your ring off. You know, she's a silver tongued devil, and she's sort of sliding here and there with. You're the saying t- Latin the- people are devils? No, that's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. What, they, I don't. I'm missing. They, it. They're 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 tempting you. Like uh, I'm not saying they're devils. Well, I guess I kind of am if you think about it. The way You're I'm saying kind of that Latin women are trying to take your money. I, I think they sort of fit in the role of the siren a little bit more. What about a Jew broad Long Island accent, like Susie Essman? Doesn't that make you want to just come? Doesn't that isn't that attractive? No, but on a guy, I think a dude on a guy, an Irish accent is very attractive. But you're right, on a woman, it's probably less attractive. I, yeah, I just watched an Irish f- film because starring you imagine a woman. It was a, scary. Oh, an Irish woman just like having babies and like, you know, just on the street and mm. being like, oh, father, we don't have the money. Mm. Oh. They all play changelings in films where they're like demons and stuff. It's very scary. Yeah. Well, in real life, they, 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 they you know, they they don't change nearly enough. The um, but no, an Irish dude like that that accent on a guy is very attractive. But you know, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps, and I didn't mind, like the I, I the uncircumcised penis. I think is fine. It's not a big adjustment. Mm. It's not a huge adjustment to make. I thought it'd be m- more of an adjustment. What do you think about the uncircumcised penis? Isn't it? I've always heard that they have more nerves in their penis. So You'd have to ask. I don't know. That That's what I've heard. So then you, you, you're you more likely to come quicker. So you're not as good in bed typically if, if you are um, if, if you have the skin. Well, I think most people that I have sex with are on medication. <laughs> so I don't think that nobody's coming immediately. You know, you have to put work in. Mm. Everyone, everyone now that's under 25 is, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, everybody's on some, like, I should get on some, like, I should get on, I come too quickly because I'm not on, I'm not on a pill. Mm. I should be on a pill, you know? Maybe I should go to the doctor and go, can I get on a pill because I want to come later? Because everybody now is just coming later and they're happier during the day. Mm. So they're happier during the day, not filled with fear and hatred during the day. And then they come, you know, after a while. Mm. Maybe, you know, and some people just not at all. I don't know. Some people just don't come anymore. Some people go off their SSRIs so they can jack off more and they end up like having to go to like mental hospitals and stuff because they're like they're tired of not being able to get their dick up anymore. So they go off the meds so they can get back into jacking off. They miss jacking off and then they go crazy. Pretty wild. What corner of the Internet do you just spend most of your time on? It's. There's a, the show in New Orleans is canceled. No one bought tickets. Uh-huh. Sorry, Robert Pattinson. Supposedly he was going to come. Mm. I think I heard from Dasha. He's so good on Red Scare. What does he do again? Uh, have you seen Good Time, the Safety Brothers movie? Is he an actor? Yeah, he's in Batman, the Batman. I can't be involved. I don't. I don't know what goes on. And I, I, you know, American culture to me is so uninteresting that I just don't really. But I imagine that I imagine some people will see that film and enjoy it. But I feel bad because him and uh, I, I think him and the Suki Waterhouse, per, you know, his, uh, you know, they were going to maybe come to that show. I heard, but maybe that's a, not true. But I feel bad. But nobody bought tickets, so we got to cut it loose. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Mm. But every other show is going. I mean, we sold like 300 tickets. The theaters got like, you know, what are we doing here? I thought there'd be more, but you know, everybody in that city is just drunk. And so anyway, sorry. But every other show is going off as planned. And then we're in Australia. We're adding shows in Sydney and Melbourne, I think in Brisbane. And, and, and we're going to rock out. And then the tour's over. And then we'll figure out, are we going to drop this thing as an hour? Are we going to drop it in clips? We don't care about your opinion. Uh, but it might be more fun to just drop it in like five-minute sections once a week. I don't know. Because, in a, I mean, it's an hour. Does anyone watch? An hour. Who's this, Ben? You love golf. Who's That's this a guy? Jordan Spieth. He's going through a pretty big swing change oh, right he's now. He's going through puberty. No, he you know he won a lot when he was younger, and he's sort no of no big golfers to... listen to this show, right? They're kind of too dumb to really appreciate my sense of humor. They're just big retards, aren't they? Well, they're you always rich Not kids, all of them. and they're mean, and they uh, just drink, and they don't like questioning things, right? Mm-hmm. So a show like this, they wouldn't like. They just like Jesus and booze. 
Yeah, I think you have to be, kind of live on the surface of life to be a successful golfer. You can't. Yeah, you dig can't. Too you deep. can't. Uh, any type of athlete mm. uh, thinking is a detriment mm. to athletics, and I've said that multiple times to the ire of many people who think they're athletes and aren't. Mm. But I think for most good athletes, being too introspective is a massive problem. Mm. Just like if you are killing it in a lot of businesses, I'm in one of the rare businesses where. You're, it's, you, you're paid to kind of think, mm -hmm. but usually you just learn an algorithm and run an algorithm over and over again. If you're a big finance, you know, there's nobody sitting in the London Financial District right now that's really killing it who's sitting there. It's like, yeah, but what is it all mean? <laughs> you know, they're just doing what they have to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what, with athletes, it's kind of the same thing, but we have, you know, big the people that listen to the show, and I just wonder if any of these golfers do. If you're a big golfer, let us know that you listen to the show because Ben loves golf, and it would be nice to find out that there's a fan, you know? I feel like maybe Phil Mickelson does because he's the only one that kind of has opinions on tour and reads books. Yeah, but I bet he doesn't. But um, who's the... Well, the he defended Saudis on the, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, who's, the, who's the Japanese guy that's killing it, Nobu? Hideki Matsuyama or uh, Sung J.M.? He's South Korean. Are you talking about Japanese or South Korean? That's Colin Morikawa. He is American. He, you know, he grew up in Glendale. Listen, you know what I'm... What My point is... <laughs> Nobu. Nobu Matsuhusha. <laughs> Who's... Hideki Matsuyama was the first Japanese golfer to win the Masters. Now he's like the president of Japan. He'll never pay for a meal the rest of his life. Good for him. Yeah. How great is it that if, if this is true, Robert Pattinson's ticket is going to be refunded? That's kind of funny, yeah. Hilarious. I don't even know if it's just probably not true. Mm. He probably has no idea who I am. But the point is, if it is true, it's hilarious that he's going to get an email saying there is no show. Mm. And I am sorry if you're a fan of me in New Orleans. I don't know what to tell you. We just can't do a show for nobody. It, it just doesn't work. So, God bless. Uh, you know, I overestimated my draw there. We're going to say it's a scheduling conflict, but that's a lie. I'm being honest with you uh, because I'm always honest. And um, that's why I'm telling you right now I'm no longer living in the United States. I've left uh, the United States of America. What tea did we have today? We had two teas. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Rue Boy, Roy Boy tea, which is R-O-O-I-B-O-S. From South Africa. I hate that accent. It's a red bush. Yeah, don't like the accent. Now, what about... I have it pulled up already. Th the this is... And I want you to tell everybody about it. Tell them the story. It's called De Hong Pao, which is the big red robe. Day Hong Pao. Can I tell the story behind the tea? I want you to tell the story. So supposedly there was like an emperor in China that was sick, and he was walking along and he met a farmer who gave him this tea. Right. And when he drank the tea, all of his medical conditions uh, lifted and he became well again. Yeah. And so he gave the farmer his big red robe. So this is called the, and it had so leathery supposedly notes. supposedly this is a, a medic, but I read the full version of the story. Mm -hmm. Later on, his son abandoned a laptop. <laughs> And even though he felt better, 80,000 images of his son smoking crack and punching hookers started to float to the surface of the internet. And there's no tea that fixes that. Fuck America. Good night.